I said, I'm gonna have to dust off my resume because Goldman Sachs is hiring global markets, digital assets, VP in New York, New York. So if you're looking for a new job, maybe you can apply to that. So uh, real quick, be, before I go into the details of the, of the job and what you may need to do, just know that uh, I love these stories because it shows us the development and the progress that we made and the rails that we made as far as crypto, because not more than roughly a year and a half ago, May 27, 2020, Goldman Sachs came out and said, cryptos are not an asset class. And they had this nice, beautiful meeting with all their bunch of new shareholders. And they were talking about uh, how they could diversify and help them. And one of the main things they said was, hey, we know you want to know about crypto, but you shouldn't because it's worthless and it's not an asset class. And here we are today, LinkedIn, Global Markets, Digital Assets, VP New York, <laughs> four days ago. So if you're interested, here's the job summaries. Uh, you can, uh, your job summary responsibilities are work as an integral member of the team with a primary focus on the timely execution of new activity in the digital asset space. Collaborate with stakeholders across the firm to understand their business and identify opportunities, sales, where digital assets can have value. Here's your qualifications though. You got to know at least, or have been at least six years working with tra traditional FI, CFI, DeFi, tech, or in a strategy consulting type role. I'm sure that's a lot of people actually and then generally passionate about digital assets and actively participating on a personal basis, blockchain, crypto, so if you're looking to apply, I link that in the description, have fun working for Goldman Sachs. And then let's finish up real quick with this part. And again, this is what led me to the Kevin O'Leary video where he talks about how people are just leaving and they're getting and moving into out of these big corporations into uh, smaller, uh, more powerful plays such as crypto digital assets. So cities or city banks to digital assets leads exiting to launch a startup. Co-heads of Citigroup, Citigroup's digital assets group are leaving the bank less than a year after being put in charge of the new crypto centered unit, which was launched in June 21, 2021. Greg uh, Girasol and Alex Cretti nailed it, announced separately on LinkedIn that they were leaving Citigroup to start a new venture. And uh, uh, Grizzle says, after seven years, I'm leaving city in order to start my own venture in the digital asset space. So just want to be clear, they're not leaving this to go to another bank to work in just traditional finance, they're digital asset stuff. It was at city where my passion for digital assets began, culminating the opportunity to lead the effort to bring the new asset class, the global wealth franchise, da, 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 whatever. And then later, and then the next one was uh, Kriti said, uh, after 11 years at city, imagine that over a decade, I've decided to take on a new challenge and we're leaving the firm. Over five years ago, my personal interest in subsequent writing about blockchain-enabled digital assets, yes, crypto, led to an amazing network of colleagues across city businesses, external companies, and interested clients. I got to tell you, if I was the hiring manager at City, I'd be pretty ticked off. Like, man, this is a big loser of a situation because I got these people. I thought they'd be here for a long time and really bring a lot of revenue to the company. And now they're going to go out there and start their own thing. And of course, you right now are probably thinking to yourself, well, duh, who wouldn't do that? But there's risks involved. And that's true. But there's no greater time, I think. And this is not, <laughs> this is not job advice or professional uh, advice. This is just an opinion. But this will be the time to take some pretty, some pretty big plays if you really think about it. Because where else are you going to get this asymmetrical return? Where else can you do this? And is it is it that? Is it that mindset to stick yourself in a corporation and just kind of hang out for 10, 20, 30 years, collect a, collect a pension and go, that's what I'm used to. I mean, that's what my generation was. So when I see stories like this, it just affirms what Kevin Leary was talking about. You're going to see a mass access of people moving into crypto, which leads me to my next point. We just did a, um, a video with uh, individual here from Puerto Rico, and I'm going to play uh, that interview right now. Let me pull it up. So yeah, so going back on that that theme, what we just talked about, it's interesting that uh, you had a couple of people who just said, you know what, I don't want to go through the whole rigmarole of going through corporate life for 30, 40 years, grabbing a pension and then retiring. It doesn't really work like that. So I brought in somebody who could shed a little light on that that did the exact same thing. This is my friend Max, who lives also here in Puerto Rico. That's why we're in the studio doing this uh, live interview. Max, thanks for coming by. Yeah, thank you, Rob, for having me. And, <laughs> uh, you know, I'm a millennial, uh, grew up in uh, Seattle, Washington, and 
I was working a honestly a dead end job. I was selling life insurance and my father uh, was the one who introduced me to cryptocurrency. Uh, I remember back in 2012, started mining cryptocurrency on my very old computer. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I had the opportunity to move down here and work full time in cryptocurrency in Puerto Rico. And that's the way I see myself moving forward in life. Yeah. And that was something that we were talking about, which I was surprised because like when you take a look at these things that are going on, like what are the options for you guys? I mean, not to not to say you guys are totally screwed, but I think you guys are screwed because let's be honest, like in, in, my, in my generation, it was all about this. It was work hard, uh, stick to yourself to uh, a certain uh, job path and you'd be OK and you can retire. You guys are not getting that. So how do you see it as a millennial? Because you're around you're. 27, 28. So, yeah, I'm 27. Yeah. Well, Rob, the first thing I did in order to become financially successful is I stopped even eating avocado toast. Okay. <laughs> and, you know, I stopped, I started making coffee at home. Yeah. That's but uh, the, the main things that we were taught growing up is one, go to college to get a job that gives you benefits, health insurance, everything. Yeah. But at the end of the day with inflation raising uh, you know, 7.9%, I think it was last month. Uh, there is no way for me to get ahead at my job, no matter how hard I work. And so the main things I have to do is one, move to cryptocurrency, put yeah. all my money into that. Cause why am I going to use a 401k that there's yeah. no reason for me to do that. Social security, most likely not going to be around by the time I retire. Cryptocurrency is going to be there and it consistently beats inflation. And yeah. the only other thing we would have to do if I can't use cryptocurrency is I have to job hop every year or every two years and try and leverage one company's offer against another. Yeah, because I mean, back in the day, it was just stick with the job. But now it seems like if you stick with the job, they still screw you because they go like, oh, we'll get somebody to work cheaper than you and mm -hmm. younger than you because we can just pull get from the pool of people who just got out of college. That's a bummer. Yeah, exactly. And I mean, uh, we were always taught like, hey, companies want to hire the new people. They want to train you up in their system and you can do that. Yeah. But you're not making money. See, this is this is why I had Max on, because to me, I'm an older guy and I don't I like I see it, but I don't see it. So I have to get that that information because I'm cursed with uh, forward knowledge. I've already done this stuff. So when I when I hear these stories about Max, I'm like, I get it, but I don't get it. So, Max, thanks for you know, set yeah. it straight. It makes sense. Hey, and I know my generation's the one that screwed everything up. I mean, there's plenty of articles out there. So yeah, exactly. So then here comes our second one. So we, you already talked about how and why you got into crypto, which made a lot of sense. But as far as like viable investments outside of crypto, do you have anything else that you get into? Because like, I, like we did a lot of real estate, but this was years ago. Mm -hmm. Right now, I don't, I don't see it as a big thing because it's so expensive, but like, how about like stocks, S&P 500, stuff like that? Yeah. So uh, when I first moved to Puerto Rico, I was mainly trading the stock market. And uh, so mainly call put options on the S&P 500. And, you know, that was decently easy to do. You know, yeah. I could make a daily goal within, you know, five, 10 minutes of the market opening. But when I'm looking at cryptocurrency, it, all that money I put into the stock market, if I had just simply parked that, into cryptocurrency didn't work a single minute for the last year, I would have made more money. And so the main thing I do with the stock market is I'm trying to be diversified. So gold, silver, cryptocurrency, and most of the stocks I hold and I actually try and actively trade yeah. relate to cryptocurrency. So Voyager is one of my favorite ones. So that's, so again, people out there who are like the big gold bugs and hate this channel, I, I get it. But why don't you just come over with us? We're trying to do the same exact thing. Gold, silver, Bitcoin seems like a pretty good, that's like the new savings account, in my opinion. Yeah. So that will lead me to my next one. You just talked about the puts and the options and the trading like that. How do you do it? I mean, it, uh, DCA, yeah. trading, leverage. Yeah, when it comes to cryptocurrency, dollar cost averaging is my favorite method of yeah. getting into cryptocurrency. Um, I do try and look at multiple different coins because I don't want to have, as they say, all your eggs in one basket. Sure. Um, I still believe Bitcoin is king, but I also believe that there are smaller cryptocurrencies that I can put money into and I can make more money faster. For example, Cardano, it's easy for Cardano to go from a dollar to two dollars than it is for Bitcoin to go from 40 to 80,000. Yeah, well, yeah, of course. But of course, people who pay Cardano are like, well, it's, it's way easier for Cardano to go to 80 cents to, to zero cents. But well, of course, we get that. Sure. Yeah, but I mean, it's. It's really just kind of a mixed bag because 
I try and learn from multiple other people. I spend most of my day online um, reading news articles, everything like that. Um, I'm not going to hit, you know, 100 percent on everything. Sure. But, you know, some of these smaller projects that I look at, like Door or NIL or, you know, some of these these very small projects that are trying to get a ton of you know, traction on there. Divi. All I need is one to hit Divi. Yeah, or Divi. Yeah, yeah. Divi. I mean, it, the official cryptocurrency of La Liga, like all I need is one of these coins to hit. And, you know, I've achieved financial freedom and that would, I mean, in, it can literally happen overnight. Cryptocurrency allows me to do that compared to, you know, working 10, 15 years at a job. Max, all you got to do is just put in your savings account, get that 0.15% interest, and you're good to go <laughs> in a thousand years. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Yeah. Thank you, Voyager. Yeah, you know, exactly. That's how I, that's my new savings account. Perfect. Yeah. And I'm waiting for that debit card, Steve. So if you can ever just, uh, you know, make that a little quicker, it'd be great. And then lastly, uh, how's the channel going? Because you got a YouTube channel. I know that's that that's the new thing. So how are we how are we looking at? Yeah. So uh, my YouTube channel, Traders in the Zone. Uh, what I try and do is just interview the average people in cryptocurrency. Mm -hmm. Because look, not all of us are going to be multimillionaires. That's one of the hardest things to do. But there are plenty of people here in Puerto Rico that actually trade cryptocurrency full time. They make a living off cryptocurrency, either working in the industry on projects or by buying and holding coins. And what mm -hmm. I want to do is just simply interview those people and ask them, how do you do it? Yeah. Because uh, yesterday I interviewed a, a musician friend of mine. And so he's a singer songwriter here in Puerto Rico, but he got into cryptocurrency in 2020. And so I interviewed him asking, you know, how has cryptocurrency affected your life? Because it's very hard, you know, people really don't know where to get started. And he already has a successful career, but yeah. cryptocurrency is simply taking his financial freedom to the next level. Yeah. And that's the main thing I want to do. I just want to ask people, how do you do it? Yeah. So look, so to check out Max's channel, I'll link that in the description, but uh, that is it. Just want to get a little, little insight into the younger generation's uh, uh, investment strategy. So Max, thanks for stopping by. Thank you, Rob. And I'll make sure I'll send you some avocado toast. Okay. <laughs> Sounds good. All right, let's jump back. Look, that concludes today for the news and what is going on. Pretty good. Made it around 21, 22 minutes, somewhere around there. So now this ends the news segment. Uh, if you got to take off at Sunday, I understand. Family, friends, and uh, church, whatever you're going to do. Great. So thanks for stopping by. If you like today's video, give it a thumbs up. If not, thumbs down. Just tell me why. I'll try to fix it and uh, try to uh, hit that subscribe button. That'd be great. Uh, so that concludes that. Now let's jump into five questions in five minutes and go from there.